Hooks solve the biggest stateful widget problem. It's hard to reduce the logic from init state, dispose, and other widget lifecycle methods. For every similar widget, we must re-implement code from scratch. Hooks solve this problem by moving all boilerplate logics to its own body that can be used only in the build method and be reused an infinite amount of time. Do you want to have your Flutter app, website or backend server completely developed in a high professional manner instead of developing it on your own? Then simply go to heyflutter.com slash app and we will develop this app for you. First install the package, then import hooks to your project file. Let's recreate the default Flutter counter app with hooks. Simply extend the widget hooks counter with hook widget, which is provided by the Flutter hooks library. And let's return the scaffold with the app bar, body in the text widget with the floating action button as the default flutter counter app. By calling use state in the build method with zero initial value, we store the returned value in the counter. The counter is an instance of value notifier and the state is now stored at the counter.value. In the floating action button, add the counter.value increments. This makes a state increase by one and user state rebuild the hooks counter widget to display the new value. To show the values, just add this to the text widget. Simple as this. Hooks already come with a list of reusable hooks, which are divided into different kinds. On other previous counter code, we have used the user state hooks and now let's create a simple time ticker up using one of the primitive hooks use effects. Simply extend the widget with hook widget and create a widget same as a stateless widget. And by calling user state in the build meter with zero initial value, we store the returned value on the number notifier. If we want it to only happen once, we define an empty list of keys. Now inside here, you can work as you are using an init state. So in this case, we are going to initialize a timer and create the callback. To dispose, simply return the timer cancel method. Finally, use this to show the value and give it some star. You can create your custom hooks and there are two ways to deliver custom hooks as a function or as a custom class. And hooks as a class is very similar in looks to a states. Let's create our custom rules as a class. First, create a hooks folder and then create timer hooks.dart file. Now let's create a class called infinite timer hook, which extends a hook class. We are going to make it private because we don't actually want to use the actual class. And then declare our timer and number variables. Start by overriding init hook, which is the same as init state. Here we can have the same logic as before. Initialize the timer variable by setting it to timer.paradic, setting the duration to one second, and then defining our callback. Now every time this callback happens, we call set state. And here of course, we set the number to the actual timer tick again. Finally, return the number on the build method. And don't forget that the timer has to be disposed. So we override the dispose method and then calling a cancel on that timer. Go to the top of the file and define a new method. We prefix all our hooks with use and this method is responsible for registering a hook. What we actually have done now is extracting all of the logic that we have for our timer into our custom hook and go to the home page inside our hook widget. We define a variable under the build method and to show the value just use the text widget and convert it to string. Now you can use this hook and you don't have to care about initializing the timer, disposing a timer and so on. Due to the hooks being obtained from the index, some rules must be respected. Do always prefix your hooks with use. Do call hooks unconditionally. And don't wrap use into a condition. And you can check and use a list of reusable hooks from this link on pub.